Once upon a time there was a wise and good king. He had only one son, a boy named Delius. Prince Del Tuz was a clever young man, and the king loved him very much. One day the king called the prince to him and said, Listen, my son, you will be king after I have died. I want you to be a wise ruler, but you will only be wise if you are happy, and you will only be happy if you marry a good and clever woman. So, I want you to travel around my kingdom, look for the best woman you can find, and marry her. Then I am sure you will become a good ruler of our kingdom. So Delius left his father's house, and he began to travel around the kingdom. He went to every town and every village. He met the daughters of rich men and the daughters of poor men, the daughters of nomads and the daughters of hunters. Some of them were beautiful, but they were stupid. Some were wise, but they were ugly. He couldn't find the perfect girl, so he spent many years traveling. He didn't look like a prince anymore. His clothes were old and torn. His shoes were broken. One day, the tired prince lay down to rest under a tree. It was the middle of the day, and the sun was high in the sky. His food was finished, and he was very hungry. He fell asleep. When he woke up, he saw a girl looking after her father's sheep. Delias looked at her. She was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. He wanted to speak to her, but he couldn't. What's the matter, the girl said. You look hungry. I have only a little bread with me. Here, you can have it if you like. She took out some bread and gave it to Delius. He ate it hungrily. Thank you, he said. The girl started to walk away. Delius wanted her to stay. Have you seen my camel, he said. No, the girl said. I haven't seen a camel, but a blind one has passed this way. Really, said the prince, and this camel had no tail? How do you know? asked the prince. I haven't seen this camel, she said, but you have described it perfectly. Look at this bush. A camel has been eating the leaves, but it has only eaten from one side of it. This probably means that it's blind in one eye. And do you see this camel dung? It's all together in one pile. But camels move their tails when they drop their dung. When a camel has a tail, the dung falls in different places. But what about the wound on the camel's right side, asked Delius. How did you know about that? Look here in the sand, said the girl. A camel has been rolling here, but it has only rolled on its left side. This means that its right side must be wounded. I found the girl I'm looking for at last, the prince said to himself. Please, he said to the girl, tell me your name. My name is Hariri, she said. And what is your father's name? Nkusa. Where does your family live? Where can I find them? Down there, said Hariri, pointing to the village in the distance. I'll come back very soon, the prince said, and speak to your family. But first I must go home. I must tell my father I found the girl I want to marry. Delius hurried back to his father's house. Father, he said, I found her. She's the wisest and most beautiful girl in your kingdom. His father smiled. That's good, my son. But don't be in a hurry. Find out more about the girl. Meet her family. Talk to them. So Delius began the journey back to Hariri's village. On the way, he met Nkusa, Hariri's father. Let's walk together, he said to the old man. Very well, Nkusa said. It was a long way to the village. The path was rough and stony, and the sun was hot. Nkusa and Delius walked together, but they didn't speak. 
At last, Elias said, The journey is too long, and we are both tired. Let's make it easier. Why don't you carry me? Or if you like, I will carry you. Then the time will pass more quickly. Nakusa looked at Delius, but he didn't say anything. What a crazy idea, he thought. What a stupid young man. They walked on and on, but they still didn't speak. After a while, they passed some young men looking after a herd of cows. Old man, said the prince, whose cows belong to these? They belong to my cousin, said Nakusa. He's a very rich man. Rich? The prince laughed. No, he must be poor. I'm sure he's a poor man. I'm sorry for him. Inkusha shook his head. What a strange young man, he thought. He's sorry for a man who has a hundred cows. A little later, they passed another herd of cattle. There were ten cows and one bull. Whose cattle are these? Delius asked. They belong to my neighbor, said Nkusa. He's only a poor man. Poor, said the prince. I don't think so. I think he's rich. Yes, he's certainly a rich man. This young man is crazy, Nakusa thought. They walked on and on over the hills until they came to a valley. There was a field of wheat in the valley. It was already yellow and ready for the harvest. Is this wheat free so that travelers can eat it? asked Delius. Free, said Nkusa. What do you mean, free? Of course it isn't free. It belongs to the farmer. I don't understand this boy at all, he said to himself. The sun was going down now. It was nearly evening. At last they could see the village in the distance. Some people were coming out of the village. They were carrying the body of a dead man. They were taking him to the cemetery. Who has died? Delius asked in Kusa. Who was this man? He was a good old man, Nkusa answered. I knew him well. And will his name be buried with him? asked Delius. Or will his name live on? How stupid, Nkusa thought. The poor man is dead. Of course, his name dies with him. It won't be used again. He said nothing. He walked on towards his house and Delius followed him. The prince and Nkusa came to Nkusa's hut. The old man turned around to Delius. He wanted to say goodbye, but the prince had already followed him into his compound. Nakusa was tired of Delius. He wanted him to go away. But now the young man was his guest. He had to welcome him. So he went into his hut and brought out a mat. He put it on the ground, and Delius sat down on it. Hariri was inside the hut. She was cooking the evening meal. Listen, daughter, Nakusa said to her. We have a very strange guest. A crazy young man has followed me all day. Do he's come to the village with me, and now he's here in my compound. Take him some water so that he can wash his feet. So Hariri took some water and went out to wash Dea's feet. He was very happy when he saw her. She smiled at him, and his heart jumped. She was even more beautiful than before. Why don't you put your feet on the mat? She asked him. Look, they're on the dirty ground. But my feet are still dirty, Delius answered. You haven't washed them yet. If I put them on the mat now, the mat will get dirty too. So Harari washed his feet. When they were clean, he put them on the mat. Harari went back into the hut to find her father. This young man isn't crazy at all, she said. Oh, yes, he is, said Nkusa. Do you know what he said to me on the road? Let's make the journey easier, he said. Why don't you carry me? Or if you like, I'll carry you. Wasn't that stupid? How can I, an old man, carry a big young man like him? 
But Father, Hariri said, you don't understand. He meant that the journey was long and boring. He wanted to make it interesting. When he said, why don't you carry me? He meant, why don't you tell me a story? And when he said, or if you like, I'll carry you, he meant, or if you like, I'll tell you a story. In that way, you could help each other along the road. Well, anyway, said Nkusa, that wasn't the only thing. We passed a big herd of a hundred cows. Who do these cows belong to, he asked me. He must be a poor man. Poor? A man with a hundred cows is rich. Then later we passed a small herd of ten cows and one bull. Who do these belong to, he said. Oh, he must be a rich man. Now isn't that crazy? No, Father Hariri said. He's right. The man with a hundred cows is rich now, but he won't be rich for long if he doesn't have a bull. His cows will never give birth to calves. After a while, they will all die, and he'll be poor again. But the man who has a bull as well as ten cows will soon be rich. His cows will all have calves, and he'll have more and more cattle every year. You haven't heard it all, Nkusa said. We passed a field of wheat. Is this wheat free so that travelers can eat it? The stupid boy asked me. Free, I said. Of course it isn't free. It belongs to the farmer. Only he can eat it. But father, said Hariri, who is the farmer? Is he a generous man? Does he give food to the guests and travelers who come to his hut? Yes, said Nakusa. I know the man. He's a good man. He's always kind to guests and travelers. And does he ask them to pay for their food? asked Hariri. Of course he doesn't, Nkusa answered. What kind of man asks his guests to pay for their food? Then the young man was right, Hariri said. The wheat is free. Travelers can eat it without paying. Well, perhaps, Nkusa said, but listen to this. While we were coming into the village, we passed a funeral. A crowd of people were taking a dead man to the cemetery. And do you know what this poor fool said? Will his name be buried with him, or will it be used again? Oh, said Hariri, that's easy to understand. He was asking you if the man had a son. The father's name lives on in his son. It's not buried with him, it's used again and again. Nkusa was tired of talking to his daughter. He went to talk to her uncles. My daughter's crazy, he said. You have seen that strange young man sitting outside my hut. He asks all kinds of stupid questions, but my daughter likes him, does she? That's good, Hariri's uncles said. Your daughter isn't a child now, she must get married soon. Why don't you let her marry him? He looks like a good man to us. Oh, very well, said Nkusa, but it's all so strange. I can't understand it at all. They're both crazy. Hariri heard her uncles and her father. She was very happy. Oh, he's so handsome, she said to herself, and so clever. He's the best young man I've ever seen. Delius was still sitting outside the hut on the mat. He heard Hariri's words, he was very, very happy. The wedding was soon arranged. Delius hurried back to his father, the king. Hariri is a wonderful girl, he said. The best girl in all of Afar. I am very happy for you, my son, the king said. Send camels and cattle for the feast. 
Take some servants and all my armed men. Go to her house and marry her. Then bring her back to the palace. Oh no, father, said the prince. She doesn't know that I'm the king's son. I don't want to tell her yet. I won't take any armed men with me when I go to her house. I'll take only one servant. She'll think I'm a poor man. If she marries me, I'll know she really loves me. The king smiled. Very well, my son, he said. Go, but come back soon. I want to meet my new daughter. It was a long way from the king's house to Nkusa's village. The prince and his servants started their journey early in the morning, but they walked all day. The sun rose higher and higher in the sky, it became hotter and hotter. I'm very hot and very, very thirsty, Delius said. I must have a drink. That's all right, sir. The servant said. Look, we're coming to a waterhole. You'll find some water there. They came to the waterhole, and Delius looked down into it. The hole was deep, the water was a long way down. Climb down and fill my water bottle, Delius said to his servant. Oh no, sir, I can't do that, the servant said. I don't want to fall and break my neck. So Delius climbed into the waterhole himself. He drank the cool, clean water and filled his bottle. Then he looked up at his servant. Pull me up. He shouted. But the servant laughed at him. Pull you up? He said. Why? You fool, I'm going to be the master now. He picked up a big stone and lifted it above his head. Delius thought, he's going to throw it down and kill me. So he shouted, wait a minute. Don't kill me. You'll never escape. Someone will soon find my body, they'll tell my father, and he'll send his men to kill you. I've got a better idea. The servant put the stone down. What do you mean, a better idea? He said. We'll change our clothes, said Delius. You take my clothes, and I'll take yours. You can be the master, and I'll be the servant. The servant laughed. That's a stupid idea, he said. If I pull you out of the waterhole, you'll kill me. I know you will. I won't kill you, I promise, said the prince. And I won't tell anyone that you're my servant. The servant picked up the stone again. I don't believe you, he said. Get ready to die. Very well, the prince said, but don't you want to marry the most beautiful girl in afar? How will you find her father's house? Only I know the way. The servant thought for a moment. Do you really promise? He said. You won't kill me? You'll be my servant, and I'll be your master? Yes, answered Delius. You know me. I always keep my promises. All right, the servant said, and he pulled Delius out of the waterhole. They changed their clothes, the prince took the servants, and the servant took the princes. Then they walked on along the road. At last, they came to Nkusa's village. Everything was ready for the wedding. The women were cooking a wonderful feast, guests were arriving, people were singing and dancing. Hariri couldn't wait to see the face of her dear Delius. She looked out of her hut, but there was the servant dressed in Delius's clothes. 
This man isn't my husband, she said. I've never seen him before. Don't be a fool, her father said. Look at his clothes, his dagger, and his shoes. He was wearing them when he came here before. But my husband is a clever man, said Hariri. This man looks like a fool. Let me ask him some questions. Oh, very well, Kusa said. But be quick, the guests are waiting. The wedding must begin. So Hariri came out of her hut and spoke to the servant. Tell me, she said, what is the heaviest thing a man can carry? The servant frowned. The heaviest thing? He said. Um, let me think. A camel's heavy. No, a fallen tree is heavy. Ah, I know, a grinding stone. Yes, a grinding stone is the heaviest thing. Hariri looked behind the servant. Who is that man standing under the tree? She wondered. Here's my next question, she said. What is the sweetest food in the world? The sweetest food? The servant said. The sweetest food? Yes, I know the answer. The sweetest food is honey. Hariri was watching the man under the tree. He was coming towards her. Now I have one more question, she said to the servant. What is the most beautiful smell in the world? The servant shook his head. What a stupid question, he said. Flowers have the sweetest smell, everyone knows that. Delius was standing behind his servant, now he smiled at Hariri. This man says he's my husband, said Hariri, but he's a fool. His answers are stupid. Nkusa was very angry. Daughter, he said, what are you saying? Look, the wedding guests are here, the feast is ready. Take this man, he is your husband. Please, father, Hariri said, I can't marry a fool. Let me talk to his servant. She looked at Delius. Did you hear my questions? She asked him. Yes, said Delius, and here are my answers. Your first question was, what is the heaviest thing a man can carry? My answer is a promise. A promise is a very, very heavy thing for me. Just now, it's the heaviest thing in the world. Next, you asked, what is the sweetest food? I know the answer to that question. I was alone once in the desert, I had no food. I nearly died of hunger. Then I met a girl, she gave me a piece of dry bread. It was the sweetest food in the world. Certainly. Here's the improved version with punctuation marks, because I was so hungry, your third question was this. What is the most beautiful smell? I can answer that one. Second, it's the scent of your infant son's skin around his neck. Although I don't currently have a son, God willing, he will grant me a wife, and she will eventually bear me a son. I clapped her hands and laughed at this point. She said, Did you hear that, father? Nakusa, this man is my husband, but he's just a servant. Hariri, I'm over this foolishness. Mary said, I'm your father, you have to listen to me. Not the servant, but the master. Hariri moved to stand next to Delius. She declared, this is the man I will marry, master or servant. When the servant heard this, 
he became terrified and dropped to his knees. He said to Delius, Oh, please, please forgive me. I was naive. Keep it a secret, your father is the king. Don't tell the king. Nakusa told Delius, This is amazing, my dear boy. Of course, Hariri, my darling, you are correct. For you, this man is ideal. I've always known you're a smart gal. A prince will be your spouse. The singers are nowhere to be found. Is the food prepared? Let's get married now. It was a happy wedding. They all danced, sang, and ate. Deb's servant, on the other hand, was not pleased and fled Nakua's compound. He was never seen by them again. Delius and Hariri set out to return to the king's residence the following day. It made everyone very pleased to see them. The king took a quick liking to his daughter-in-law. He said to Delius, My son, you have made a wise choice. I now know that you will become a wise and contented ruler at some point. A son was born to Hariri after a year. With great joy, Delius held his son in his arms and inhaled the scent of the newborn's neck. For him, it was the sweetest smell on earth. Hariri gave him a smile. She said, I have given you a son. I want you to promise me something now. Of course, Delius replied. What's that? Hariri remarked, every time you go out at night, I get scared. The W is the most dangerous location in the town because there are bad men there. When the animals have come back to the town in the evening, please do not visit the W, assure me. Say what I say, Delius said. Delius and Hariri thus enjoyed a long and happy marriage. Seven sons and seven daughters were born to them. Following his death, Delius ascended to the throne. He was a decent and wise king. The years went by. When Delius and Hariri were elderly, a servant paid Delius a visit one day. He mentioned that the camels had returned from the W, but one of them was missing. Delius disregarded his assurance to Hariri. He said, I'll go look for it myself. There was a half-moon visible in the sky, but it was still dark outside. There was silence, no one was at the W anymore. Everyone was in their own homes, at home. For men suddenly leaped out from behind a tree. One person cried, Give us your money. Another person yelled, Give us your clothes. The third man stepped forward to examine Delius's face. He told the others to let him go. It's the monarch. How come? The fourth man spoke. Sure, let him go quickly. However, the first two bandits chuckled. They told him to let go. Are you deranged? He'll pursue us with his soldiers. They'll find us and eliminate us. No, we have to kill him right now. They started arguing with one another. The first two robbers said, kill him. The others said to him, leave him. The strongest robbers were the first two. They told the king, we have to kill you. Our goal is to preserve our own life. The king said, give me one last wish before I die. Excellent, the bandits remarked. What's that? Ask them to come to my house, Delius said. 
Tell my spouse that I was spotted close to the W. Tell her, there's a black cow in my herd that has too long of horns. The other cows will lose their eyes as a result. Remove it from the group. So that's it, the third robber inquired. Yes, the king replied. Tell her to take off the black mat that is on top of my house. In its stead, place a white mat. Is there anything extra? The fourth robber spoke. Delius said, yes. I own four camels. Give my wife instructions to keep two of them, but to give up on the other two. Are you done now? Said the first robber. Indeed, Delius replied. The first robber said, then you must die. Thus, Delius was killed by the bandits. His body was taken by them and thrown beneath a tree. The first two robbers said, come on. We have to flee. The third and fourth robbers said, no. We have to give the king's wife his message. We made a pledge. Are you crazy? exclaimed the first robber. She'll be aware that we murdered him. They'll kill us, her sons. The third robber stated, but she doesn't know that he's dead. No one is aware of his passing. The four robbers then proceeded to Deb's home. They requested to see the monarch. Her seven sons, each holding a spear, were chatting with her. The first robber approached the queen with confidence. He said, I have a message for you from your husband, the king. Where did you get to know him? Hariri inquired. The thief replied at the W. The queen covered her mouth with her hand, widening her eyes and turning to face the bandits. Her sons approached her. She said, Is my husband doing well? The robber laughed, He's okay. He will soon return home, we left him beneath a tree. What message did he convey? Hariri inquired. She was told the king's words by the first robber. Hariri instructed her sons to catch these men after he was done. Her oldest son asked, Why? Only a few of our father's messages have they brought. Already, the bandits were fleeing the property. Hurry, hurry! Hariri yelled, Don't let them escape. Her seven sons pursued and apprehended the bandits. When they returned them to the queen, she was in tears. Mother, what's the problem? Her oldest boy inquired. Did you miss the message from your father? Declared Hariri. He said, listen, this is what it means, remove the black cow from the herd of cattle. The other cow's eyes will be put out. This indicates that your father wants his body buried, not for the crows to eat his eyes. Her son said, You mean our father's dead? Indeed, Hariri replied. This is the second message he sent. Remove the black mat from the roof and replace it with a white one. He wants me to put on white clothes for him now that he is dead. My father was killed by these men. One of the sons yelled, and the others raised their spears in response. Hariri said, wait. One more message was received. Your father said to keep two of his camels, but let the other two go. This implies that while two of these men attempted to save his life, the other two killed him. The bandits toppled over onto the earth. The first robber said, 
you know everything. You're accurate. My friend and I carried out the king's murder. Both men made an attempt to rescue him. The brothers yelled, kill the murderers, and used their spears and daggers to dispatch the first two robbers. Then Hariri and her sons were taken to the W by the third and fourth robbers. Delius's body was discovered, and they returned him home. After Hareri dressed in white, her sons buried their father. Everyone praised him as a wonderful king, but why? Because he was wed to a morally upright and astute woman.